What's up guys, this is Bryce with Dust Runners Automotive Journal. Today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about the GM LT engine. As you probably know, the Gen 3 and Gen 4 GM small block engines are a part of the LS engine family, which is wildly popular and we've talked about it in depth in other videos. Following the success of the LS engine, the Gen 5 engine, codename LT, is becoming really popular for aftermarket engine swaps. Being that the LT engine is just another generation within the small block engine family, it shares a lot of similarities with the Gen 3 and Gen 4 engines, however it doesn't actually share any parts with those engines. The Gen 5 LT engine was initially introduced in the 2012-2013 Corvette C7. It featured an all-aluminum design and coil near plug ignition just like the LS that it was replacing. One of the biggest differences between the LS and the LT is the LT's direct injection fuel system. Now, the Gen 5 LT engine family currently includes the LT1, LT2, LT4, LT5, L83, L86, L8T, and a few more engines. All of these engines that I just mentioned feature direct fuel injection, variable valve timing, active fuel management, electronic throttle, and some other advanced features. Now it should be noted that the L8T is the only current LT engine that uses an iron block instead of an aluminum block. Now another feature that was taken from the Gen 3 and Gen 4 LS engines is the Y block design. Now this means that the block is more of a Y and it gives the bottom end really, really good strength. It allows for six bolt main caps on the crankshaft, Four bolts are facing vertically and two bolts face horizontally that clamp the block wall to the main cap. This design provides really good rigidity for the crankshaft and it's a really, really strong design. Cast in place cylinder liners allow for an all aluminum deck face with induction liner heating utilized for dimensional control. This results in an exact placement of every cylinder in every single block. Nodular iron main caps retained with six cross bolts replace the previous efforts where powder metal was used. Just like the Gen 3 and Gen 4 engines, the Gen 5 engine has the camshaft really up high and far away from the crankshaft, which allows up to a four inch crank throw, even larger for some aftermarket crank. In addition to the redesigned main caps, each cylinder in a Gen 5 engine features piston oil squirters. Now these drench the underside of each piston in the surrounding cylinder wall with an extra layer of cooling and friction reducing oil. This reduces piston heat and improves thermal efficiency. A Gen 5 aluminum block retains the same bore spacing and main dimensions, but makes minor changes to items like motor mount bolt pattern, as well as moving the top bell housing bolt location. The Gen 5 camshaft is unlike previous Gen 3 and Gen 4 camshafts in the fact that it has a variable valve timing mechanism on the front of the cam. At the rear of the cam, it features three lobes which drive the mechanical fuel pump. Now, all Gen 5 engines are built with variable valve timing that offers an enormous swing of over 60 degrees of authority over the camshaft position. Now this massive swing swing in cam timing allows for really good low end power and really good top end power as well as pretty decent fuel mileage. It should be noted that some LT engines are not like previous Gen 3 and Gen 4 engines in that it's way more difficult to install a camshaft. In previous engines it was really easy to do, install a cam whereas on the new ones you have to pull the oil pump which requires pulling the oil pan which on something like the C7 Corvette is going to require you to drop the subframe making it way more difficult to just install a cam. Now for the intake manifold, GM used an all new design, which allowed air to get into the combustion chamber much easier. The imbalance of airflow is reduced by 50% compared to the outgoing small block. Now the new intake manifolds are composed of composite material, which keeps the weight low while maintaining high thermal tolerance. Now what you might notice on a Gen 5 engine is that most of them lack a hydraulic power steering pump. Now this is because all the cars which use the LT engine now use electronic power steering, which does not require a hydraulic pump should be noted that the trucks still use an, a hydraulic power steering pump, so you'll find that on the truck LT engines. Now, as mentioned earlier, one of the biggest changes from the LS to the LT is the introduction of a direct fuel injection system, also known as GDI, or gasoline direct injection. At the back of the engine, underneath the intake manifold, the LT features a high pressure fuel pump, which, like I said earlier, is driven by the cam. Hard lines are used to transfer fuel from the high pressure fuel pump to the injectors because pressure can exceed 2000 PSI. Now the direct injection system is in part what allows the LT to have a really high compression ratio, even in boosted applications such as the LT4. Looking at the combustion chamber, you can see the position of the direct fuel injectors opposite of the spark plug. It's hard to see, but each one of those nozzles has six very small holes, which allows fuel to vaporize and burn much more completely. GM is said to have spent more than 6 million hours developing their direct fuel injection system, and it's a very, very efficient system. At first glance when it comes to the LT1 cylinder heads, they might seem similar to previous LS heads. 
but the reverse valves and the splayed relations are one of the most noticeable differences when you compare it to the LS series head. The reality is that every square inch of the LT1 head has been redesigned to support the direct fuel injection system as well as improve overall airflow. All of these things combined allow the LT to have a much higher compression ratio than any small block engine family before it. The high compression ratio, direct injection system, variable valve timing, and superb head flow allows the LT to output impressive power and naturally aspirated and boosted application. In the case of the new LT2 used in the C8 Corvette, power output is around 490 horsepower. Everything we've talked about so far only relates to totally stock Gen 5 engines and like previous Gen 4 and Gen 3 engines, the LT really comes alive with some basic bolt-ons. It didn't take long from the Gen 5's release in 2013 for tuners to start getting their hands on the engine and start tinkering with it. From basic bolt-ons all the way up to stroker kits and supercharger systems, basically everything you want for the LT is now available on the aftermarket. For those who want a really wild build, a lot of the stroker kits for the LT engines take it from 6.2 liters to 7 liters and output over 700 horsepower, which is over 100 horsepower per liter, and it's a good testament to how efficient the LT engine is. Like previous Gen 3, Gen 4 engines, the Gen 5 LT is very small for its displacement option. The push rod design means that the heads are very small and the block is very compact. Whereas if you compare it to something like a five liter Coyote engine, those engines are massive in comparison to the LT engine. Most competitors' engines are using a dual overhead cam design, which is more efficient and better on paper, but it's significantly larger and takes up way more space. Thanks to the all aluminum design, the LT engines are very, very light for their size. Current displacement options for the LT engine family include the 5.3 liter L82, L83, and L84, 6.2 liter LT1, LT2, LT4, and LT5, and the 6.6 liter L8T. It's possible that we'll see other displacement options in the near future, such as a possible 7 liter engine, but as of right now, those are the only displacement options. So that's just about everything you need to know about the GM LT engine. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys think of it. If you think uh, you know Gen 3 or Gen 4 or Gen 5 is better, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.